Welcome, everyone, to a special edition of Dr. Delbert Blair's Expanding Consciousness. I'm your host, uh, Tony Quaid, Light Wave, as I'm known in some circles. We have the good doctor uh, online, ready to go, to share with us. Plus, if you are on the West Coast, he will be uh, out on the West Coast this weekend at several events, so he's going to be telling us about that. For those of you who are new to the program, you don't know who Dr. Delbert Blair is, Dr. Delbert Blair uh, founder of the Meta Center, uh, Metaphysics and Spiritual Research Center, and Information Hub out of Chicago. Uh, Dr. Delbert Blair has is no stranger to my network. Uh, a lot of the work that I've done here uh, is directly or indirectly uh, related to my acquaintance with him over the last 20 or so years. Uh, information from everything metaphysics, spiritual. He is a contactee. That's going to be very interesting. He shared some light on that with me the other day. Uh, interesting gentleman. I call him a renaissance man in the truest sense of the word because if ever there's somebody I know that you can't just pigeonhole into he does this or he's known for doing that, it would be Dr. Delbert Blair. Um, those of you who know him, you know what he does is always about the information, sharing the information, giving us a new look and insights into current events, things that are going on, getting us to think, okay, lead ourselves to enlightenment. Uh, as he always says, he doesn't give us uh, uh, truth, he gives us facts, and we will find and discover our own truth. I've just got a couple of real quick announcements, and then we're going to get right into it. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to, um, for those of you who celebrate Independence Day, uh, I'd like to wish you a safe one. Hopefully you're out there doing your thing and um, uh, in company of good people and good spirit and good vibrations, if you will. Um, I just want to uh, make an announcement about um, a guest I had on uh, several weeks ago, uh, Attorney John McKenzie. Uh, his website is Blackout in America. Dot com And what he proposes is a very simple solution to keep young black people, young people, period, out of jail. It's that simple. It's a simple, profound solution. Uh, it's a wonder why we can't implement it. The reason why I bring this up is that I was looking on the newswire today, and there's a young man in Florida, I believe, his first time offense. Uh, he's getting 134 years for uh, uh, armed robbery. Now, I'm not condoning uh, the behavior, the criminal behavior. He didn't have to be there as a choice he didn't have to make. Uh, and he must learn, uh, unfortunately, very severely in this episode of a very skewed justice system, uh, 130 something years. But the reason I bring this up is that if ever there was someone who I've heard to give information to keep young people out of jail, and it's John, attorney John McKenzie out of uh, Austin, Texas. Blackout in America. Go check it out. Uh, look at the information he has there. Get the book. And for those of you that already have it, um, I think you'll, you'll agree what I'm talking about. I also want to give a shout out to, to um, You Love Jewelry. U-L-O-V-E Jewelry. Now, if you like uh, custom jewelry, uh, spiritual jewelry, uh, uh, wearable jewelry, functional jewelry, if you will. You'll love, you love jewelry. U L O V E J E W E L R Y. As I understand it, uh, Brother Adam, uh, will be in, uh, New Orleans at the Essence Festival. Um, he, it is a family owned jewelry, uh, custom jewelry, handcrafted jewelry, uh, company, family owned and running strong for the, since 1969. Some exquisite designs. I think for those of you who like Afro, Afrocentric jewelry, you'll love it. And those of you that don't, you just like nice jewelry pieces, you'll love that as well. Uh, you love jewelry, U L O V E J E W E L R Y. And then for those of you who are into aromatherapy, Aromatherapy, aromaharmony.net, aromaharmony.net. Uh, you've got some really, really, really uh, good functional, I call functional fra uh, fragrances there. Uh, if, you're, if you're stressed out and busy these days, Dr. Delbert Blair has told us some things about how to combat that and what, who's the sinister behind it. But uh, if you're stressed out, uh, you need energy. Uh, they have a real nice product line over there. I've used them. They smell very good. I, I don't like, I don't like wearing, uh, a men's cologne, and especially the way it is nowadays. Some of it smells kind of sweet. I'm just saying. But anyway, uh, aromaharmony.net. 
Uh, well, let's get right into it. Oh, one last thing, one real quick announcement to a couple of uh, people, uh, personal uh, shout outs from me to uh, Selena uh, Barron and LaWanda Rich. I want to thank you both very much for listening to the show, spreading the words and being supporters of this. Without you, we could not do what it is we do, as well as Sister Jean Morgan. Uh, Sister Jean M Morgan, um, we love you all. We love you. And Dr. Blair introduced me to Sister Jean, and it was one of the uh, best acquaintances that I've made, someone who uh, the epitome of queen mother spirit and the love that when she says, I love you, you feel it through your bones. She's a very beautiful sister, and uh, Dr. Blair introduced me to her, I guess it was going on two years ago, and I'm glad that he made the acquaintance. Well, enough of me running my mouth. I want to bring uh, Dr. Blair in. He's got some things he wants to share with us, as always, uh, on this particular day. Dr. Blair. Brother Tony Quaid, how are you, man? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm not going to complain, and nobody cares when you complain anyway. <laughs> anyway, right? So we always say how you're doing, but do we really mean it? And I think I do when I say it. Oh, yeah. We know and you do. We do. who are trying to vibrate faster, are vibrating faster, and understand yes, what time it is. I definitely want them to do well, because if they don't yes. do well, the rest of us won't either. We still got people chasing their tails and straddling the fence, so you know how that goes. Only dogs chase their, uh, their tails, and only a fool straddles the fence. When one side might go, either side goes, you're going to lose, so that's the way it goes. Yes. At any rate, there's so much happening in our news. Yes, this is Independence Day. We're still not independent from Britain. That's a fictitious okay. moral. The that's British right. are they still are. Uh, as you know, I mentioned a long time ago, the British were sold harp, and you tell me why the British were sold harp, and harp was one of the most strategic so-called non-weaponized weapons that the United States has or have, so obviously they must have something more or so, but this independence, you know, we're, ne we're still not independent, and this planet won't be independent till we get rid of all the Dracons, so that's as far as I'll take that one for right now. Yes. I want to give a shout-out, as you have, to everybody out in the California area, and that's a huge continent. I don't call it a state, it's a continent. When you go from the tip of it down in Baja and uh, San Diego and, and L.A., all the way up to the Bay Area and up to Marine County. But I do know, and I want to thank some of you who are going to journey down to the L.A. area just to see me. That's a beautiful compliment. I thank you. What I wish had happened is those who are having to do this couldn't get enough people together in the Bay Area to get me up there. Well, they say that's not true. But it's the truth because they've been trying so hard, and even though I know hundreds of people, literally, uh, personally know about 40 in that Bay Area, they can't seem to get it together there for that. So I'm thankful that you're going to journey down to where I will be for the next three days, and that's in the L.A. area. Also, if you go to my website, and I don't know why you guys avoid it, because up there is listed where I'm going to be. Up there is listed the times and phone numbers to contact if you need more information. It's right on my website. So please go to www.themetacenter2.com. I'll do it slowly. www.worldwideweb.themetacenter, M-E-T-A-C-E-N-T-E-R, tip the number 2. You just hit 2. Dot com. Even if you go the other way, you'll get it. But I like to make sure you get to my site because there's so many things on my site that you won't get if you have to back into it to Google or whatever. So anyhow, Friday I'll, Friday night I'll be there. I'll be at the Afiba Center. Afiba Center, that's some right. Of, they call it the Akiba Center. It's not it's the Afiba Center. <laughs> now, I'm not a native, and I still know it's the Afiba Center. So get in there at 7 o'clock and have some fun. We're going to cover explaining the ascension. We're going to get in again a truth about the sun. And believe me, the sun, and I'm going to get into a lot of that today, too, because the sun is affecting us all. The daughters may affect some of us, but the sun, S-U-N, as I try to be, you know, collaterally funny, uh, is really going to affect all of us and is very much. So we're getting about the truth about that, what's really happening on it, what they're hiding about it on that part, too. The next day, big, big, big time, because that's the one I back myself into a corner, but that corner is turning out to be round and not a square, simply because we're going to have a round meditation circle there. And that's when I'm going to be at the Papillion Institute of Art. P-A-P-I-L-L-I-O-N. P-A-P-I-L-L-I-O-N. It's right up there on the Internet. Many of you know about it. Some of you don't. It's at 1835 Main, and that cross-section there is Washington Street. That's at Main and Washington. It's downtown, south part of L.A. Yes. So you really can't yes. miss it. Very beautiful area there. And that's Sister 
Michelle is the one that's there for that one. If you need more information, that number is 323-300-4013. And I hope you are getting out your pencils and paper because I'm going to give this once more as I sign off. It's only going to take a minute to go over these numbers. But that number, 323-300-4013, all of this can be corroborated right going to my website. Same thing I'm giving you out now again. But the beautiful thing about that, wow, we just had a, a bomb just went off outside here. Not a real bomb. It's the 4th of July. <laughs> I think, wait a minute now. Yep. <laughs> you know, well, I hope that doesn't happen, but who knows down the line, too. I hope that never happens to me. But either way, um, at that particular one, we're going to put, I'm going to put together Saving California, Saving Your Life, How to Go About Doing It, How to Go About Saving Your California, Saving Your Life. Now, you say, what kind of a madman would have a lecture about that? I'm going to give you a history that some of you may have never heard about California. I'm going to give you the reasons why I think you can do something about it other than just look and wish and hope that the, the San Andreas fault doesn't go down and so on and so forth. I'm even going to explain the truth about that one. It's going to be something that's going to be controversial, when or I not, uh, but I say don't miss it. And if you want to take part on the Q&A to go down in history, or if you just want to keep quiet and let nobody know you were even there, whatever it is, you can hear information is going to really shake you up. But I give you solutions. Every time I bring something, I try to find solutions. It's getting to a point that solutions are way beyond me, but this is still something. We can do something about that whole state, or at least portions of the counties for those people who wake up. I'm going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to give you a history, and you'll be, they'll be talking about this <laughs> for a long time. Yes. For uh, the second part, of course, and the, the, uh, the mission on that one is $25, by the way. Uh, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. The mission on that one is $20. Now, there's going to be a break, and then we need to come back for our meditation. The first one we're going to give, of course, is the sound of silence, and that is one you can use immediately. If 5,000 of you show up there, we'd still be able to, to deal with 5,000. The rest of it is going to be select because we're going to have a circle of people. We can't get but about 60 people in that one, so it's going to be selective. That's going to cost you 25 bucks. And for the rest of you, of course, who have already registered, and if some of you have paid 100 now, yes, that will come to you free for the ones who have already signed up for that. But that one is, again, starting at 1 o'clock at the Papillion Institute of Art. Again, that's 1835. Main Street, downtown L.A., Washington and Maine, 323-300-4013. The rest of it is Han Park, and they're honoring me, and I'm very beautiful. I'm very happy about that. Uh, it's an honor that anyone who thinks people can gather in a whole big park and have the last one on the stage, somebody that they're giving honor to, uh, it's in recognition of over 50 years of teaching, and I do deserve it, but that's not the point. How many of us get what we deserve? So by the fact that somebody actually went out and is getting people together, and they're going to honor me there, and that's very beautiful, too. Uh, there's a donation there if you want. Other than that, there's not. I'm not going to be saying too much there, but I will be listening, as they call it, to the gathering of friends and family, and I call it a gathering of souls. And if you're there with your cell phone on, please put a diode on it. Other than that, these 4th of July celebrations and all are really almost dastardly because everybody's going to be having a cell phone. Like today, people are out at the lakefront. <laughs> cell phones, cell phones, cell phones. They're avoiding the heat from the sun and inviting the heat into their brains from the cell phone because these new droids, Blackberries, uh, iPods, iPads, these are all nothing but walking computers, small ones. And they are radiating you, folks. I, again, say if you don't like the dials, get somebody else's protection. But put something that is actually going to block those rays. You're going to have more people now gathering together, and they're blocking the sunshine, but even in sometimes swim trunks. And often when how can you go in the water with a cell phone in your swim trunks? They say, well, they put it on a blanket. Those things are very deadly because gatherings of people mean everybody's radiating everybody else, and you leave their worse off. Plus, you're going to be shooting sulfur into the air and exploding it. So <laughs> you know me. i got to tell it like it is. And if you don't like it, then at least say, well, I did this because I didn't hear that nut or I didn't believe him, but at least I heard him say that a long time ago. So I've said that a long time ago, too. Speaking of the sun, now I know wherever you are, I know, uh, Tony, you have some storm clouds brewing there, and I sincerely hope it doesn't hit there as it's supposed to be, and let's see if we can avoid that. But most of the nation now is under a sun watch. And here in Chicago, not just in Illinois, in Chicago especially, man, we've really caught it. 
And what's so interesting about that, we had for the last two days 321,000 people in their homes have lost power. 321,000 people. It's still some 7,600 people that are completely in a blackout. They restored partial power sometimes to the street light, but not to the homes, and I didn't know you could do that. I learned a lot again, but either way, we're going through it. And in fact, what's interesting, a lot of the suburbs here, and there's a lot of rich suburbs and wealthy suburbs around the Chicago area. Uh, you've got Antioch, you've got Carroll Stream, you've got Munderline, you've got Cary, uh, so on and so forth again. They've actually canceled their fireworks display. They feel that it's too hot, it's too dangerous, and they don't need to add to the misery. So if really? You could get, oh, yeah. You know, some of them had big affairs planned. They actually canceled them then. And what I have researched, uh, there are some CMEs, coronal mass ejections, from our sun that are increasing at an all-time rate, at least, shall we say, a near modern area of meteorological readings and astrological readings, too, for those who are into astrology. They've never seen anything like this in years. And even there's now, and I have two photographs, I'm going to try and bring them with me when I come there, of an object that came out of the sun, oh, it was about, let's see, time flies, so about last Saturday, it was photographed. This object came out of the sun, it was almost like a straight line. It came like curved and went back into the sun. I, mm. said, I don't believe what I just said. To see that object from here, that object had to be almost as big as our planet. And it was in a straight line. I don't know what kind of thing is a straight line, a cigar-shaped thing or something. Made a curve and went back into the sun. There are things going on on our sun now, and that's why on that Friday night at the Akiba Center, I'm going to be talking about the truth about our sun. Because obviously... We have not been told the truth about it. No. Well, it. It was known then as childlike in kindergarten compared to what it's doing now. So that was there. And, of course, these corona mass ejections are affecting all of us. And many of the reasons for these storms is because of the amplification of this magnetic energy coming from our sun. And, of course, I've showed pictures and gave lectures on the double sun. We have one up now that shows you not only the second sun but a coronal mass around them both. Go to our website. See it for yourself. I don't know why. Go to the website. That's why I have it up there. Tony, they yeah. call me here. They say, I didn't know this, and we got it all on the website. So, again, I guess I don't give my website out number again. www.themetacenter2.com. Please order from us, but also see some of the things we have posted for free that will entertain you, will educate you, and some maybe even, what can I say, quantify you, mystify you. It's up yeah. there. Keep abreast of what's happening. So, you know, me and I can drive it on from now on, man, and it would never stop. So it's according where you want to go with it. If there are any callers, if not, then uh, well, you know, I can still right on some more. Well, let me give them, let me give them the call-in number, first of all, as, for those of you who want to ask Dr. Blair a question, if you're in ears distance, 347-202-0471. The chat room is now open, so if you are coming through by way of blog talk radio, you're more than welcome to uh, type a question in the chat room. We'd like to hear from you. But uh, this is the text, and you know, Dr. Blair, <laughs> uh, we were told on, on uh, Brother uh, Jamal told us on Interlight, about uh, that people nowadays do more texting than anything, and I, I don't know about that, but by all means, if that's the way that people want to communicate, so be it. I, I like the other way. I like to hear the voice. Um, I've got somebody that has a question for you um, out of Chicago, actually, uh, Sister Nishiba, E-Spirit E, and she's actually a host here on Block Talk Radio. She uh, says, can you ask Dr. Blair about the Illinois Crystal Caves? Now, I'm not sure about the Illinois Crystal Caves because let me, well, all right, let me directly say what I do know before I start lateralizing what was already a pointed question. In downstate Illinois, Collinsville, Edwardsville, that area down, what is called Cahokia, there is Cahokia State Park and Cahokia Mounds, the snake mounds that run through Ohio and Pennsylvania and all like that, end or begin, some say it's the ending of it, I said it may have been the beginning of the snake mounds, although they said the head of the dragon, the head of the snake, was here in downstate Illinois, whichever, again, they had caves that were there, and many of these caves did have crystal uh, things. They had satellites and magnetites in there, because, uh, I mean, stagolites and satellites and stagmatites uh, in there. Now, that usually, usually comes when there's been a lot of cold 
uh, water and stuff running, and it kind of dripped down and over the years froze. Well, as you know, once you go below, below ground, it's always 60 degrees. They say if you get really deep into the ground, it gets very cold instead of hot with the so-called thing. But now, if that's what she means, yes, I've heard about that. If she's talking about another area that has crystals and stuff like this, I'm not aware of it. So, again, if I haven't answered it, it's because I didn't understand the question or didn't know. If that is what you're talking about, yes, I am familiar of some of the things. That been, in fact, that particular, whether that was what you meant or not, that particular area the government has been in now for some three years, they removed most of the ancient artifacts that were there. Most of those things that were there, too, look negroid, which is very interesting. And it's been said that a very important person was buried there. It is the largest pyramid on earth now discovered by whip. It's bigger than the one at, uh, at um, uh, Tahuti, Tahuti, at Cairo. It's bigger than the one, you know, we always talk about the three great pyramids or the seven great pyramids. We're talking about the little ones. It's larger at the base than there. And somebody was buried there that was so important that they had 13 rings of spear tips. And these spear tips, when you looked at them, all of them had was come from a different rock formation. It meant these were spear tips that had come from around the globe. How did all these people get there? Why did they introduce spear tips for this? Event? What was this ceremony that they went through? And why was this pyramid at either the beginning or the end of the snake mounds? Now, in other words, they know the snake mounds now are nothing but little pyramids that form a line all the way out, formed a line all the way out to the east coast. Did you hear me? Pennsylvania, Ohio, places. Some of them have been destroyed. Some of them have looked over and been covered over. So that whoever was there was very important. And this is why Illinois is still, and Chicago is a hub of that, but Illinois is still a very mysterious place. Uh, right across the river there, of course, you even have the Golden Arches. And I'm talking about now the St. Louis Arch. It's also interesting that if you look laterally east across that big park, there is a McDonald's. <laughs> and that is, talk about an oxy, what do you call that, a misplaced, what do you call the thing, you misplaced it something all the time? Uh, yeah, so it's a very mysterious place, and so whether that was what you meant or not, I'm still glad that I had a chance to kind of relate that big feature in Illinois, the, the mounds down there and the mound builders that built it. Right. Well, I want to backpedal a little bit, Dr. Blair. This this is and me and you've talked about it many times. Some of the the even mainstream science is starting to reluctantly, and I use that word reluctantly, disclose very uh, uh, let's just say processed information about the sun. I was doing some research years ago, and uh, I came across this notion that the sun is actually uh, a black hole or, or a, 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 a natural a gateway. Now, is that, was that an esoteric meaning or is that a literal? Uh, what information do you have about the, nat the true nature of our sun? Well, the true nature of our sun is almost infantable, unfantable, because our sun is now changed. <laughs> and what you see nature of our original sun is now the nature of our tri-sun. We've got three suns now, probably we'll have four by next year. Uh, we've had a double one since 2004, which I've talked about. I'm going record to talking about way back there. And again, people just said, we back off the guy because he seems intelligent, but some of his stuff is so way out, I don't believe him. Well, you don't ever have to believe me. I give you facts. You find that truth, and once you start by facts, you might join our truth, and we'll be truth teachers. We have not been told truth on almost anything on this planet. I know I spent a lot of time in school to be educated. I found that I was miseducated. All it did was let me know what I won't have to teach to somebody else because it was a lie. So either our scientists are very dumb, dumbed down, comatose, brainwashed, inoculated, vaccinated, encrypted, or they want us to be dumb while they're intelligent. I think it's the latter. Uh, our sun right now is too binary. And as I state, we have a picture of the binary sun, the second sun behind the sun. It's giving off high magnetic resonance. Not only that, but as I stated at the beginning of the show, we've seen things come out of it, go back into it. Uh, it's not hot. It's not bright. Oh, yes. And I'll be giving that lecture there in California. I already have a yes. sun tape if you want to purchase it. So everything I say, I can back up. The point is, again, what really is our sun? Let's wait till next year and find out. Because okay. next year, it is my understanding that we will understand our sun is completely changed. 
it is changing our planet, and a brown dwarf sun, which is just beginning to come on the scene, is now beginning to appear. So we're going to have a sun bigger than the one we had. What will happen to the one we have? Either it will be a binary future sun, or it will have to be absorbed. We have so many changes that could possibly happen now. It is mind-blowing. It is my it is, it is mind blowing, and our, our minds need to be altered. Our brains need to have more engrams and, and some axons engraved into it, engrammed into it, because we've got to expand consciousness, just like our planet is. Okay, Doctor Blair, I've got a caller on the line. Um, actually, uh, the sister who had the question, Nashiba, E Spirit E, host here on Blog Talk Radio. Nashiba, how you doing? Hi, I'm doing pretty good. How you doing, Tony? <laughs> Doing all right. Um, yeah. You and, and Dr. Dr. Blair are both there in Chicago. Oh, yes, and we're enjoying our wonderful heat wave and the storms that we had last weekend. <laughs> and Dr. Blair, I appreciate you uh, responding and you will, you could correct in the interpretation of my inquiry regarding the crystal caves, so I appreciate that. Uh, one of the other questions that, that I was kind of curious to know is what are your thoughts about the God a particle in a, these research and development centers. My understanding is 16 of them on the globe, the Fermi Labs. I know there's one here in Illinois. So what are your thoughts about the infamous God particle? And it was brought up again recently on CNN. Well, the CERN uh, particle accelerator searching for the God particle, uh, most of them don't believe in gods. They think they already are one. So consequently, if they do feel that they're gods, then we well, at least they're not searching for the creator's particle, <laughs> simply because I, if they found it, they'd find some kind of way to mess over it, too. Uh, just like, uh, what was that? It's an old one they had out there, Brookhaven or wherever it was. They had one for the longest, as you say, Fermi Labs, and they had one there. Uh, they've got another one out in Colorado. Uh, who knows the ones that they've also hidden and not talking about. But this, in search for the God particle, is what they're saying, is for that one atom, that one energy unit that is so heavy and yet so light that it cannot, it can go through the earth or go at the earth and so on and so forth. It means it's a whole new latitude that they're trying to open up. My understanding is almost like, and you might bring together too, the Chernobyl later on because it kicks right back to that. My understanding is that they turned that daggone thing on about three years ago in the fall. They officially did it supposedly last year and again this year. But that thing, when it was turned on the first time, released a particle that went through the containment and went into the earth. And had it not been, and I'm using this from some extraterrestrials, we'd have had a complete mess already. They don't know what they're doing. They're being led by draconic consciousness and snake consciousness, and I don't think they know themselves what they're doing. They're always searching for something to be better than the Creator, at the same time losing their souls by doing it. Because if they understand the Creator of that, you don't have to create a God particle. You are a particle of the Creator's mind. So I just simply say, the research they usually do is for no good. It benefits nothing but egos. And I say again, what are they doing this time? I totally agree with you 100%. <laughs> It's a very dangerous uh, thing, and I think people need to uh, make sure that they become aware of it if they're not currently. Yeah, well, again, you know, many people are not aware of many things, but shows like this one and shows that you present and I try to present hopes to make these people aware of the common person, the regular person, the person who's 9 to 5 but is still very spiritual and can't understand what they're doing. We'll explain it for them. The thing is, when they explain it, you might want to wish you didn't know because you've got a lot of ungodly people up in making laws and doing science research that's going to affect you directly every day. Ask Monsanto and ask Oxitec. That's totally on point. And I, the other place that I would direct people to, is, and I say this on air, and Tony, Tony is aware of this as, as well, is when pe when from when as people move forward and we are entertained by movies, try to digress a little bit and and pierce into a movie beyond the entertainment. Mm -mm. Meaning that there's <laughs> messages and I've gotten to the point I literally write down a list of movies. <laughs> I saw one today called Deep Core or your Avatar or your Twenty Twelve. I can give you a who's who's list of some of the movies, but start piercing through movies beyond the entertainment of the movie because yeah. they're telling you something there are the things that you see where sometimes you sit back from the entertainment perspective and you're like oh isn't that some that's real cool that little technology thing they did that 3d thing of what you have to understand by time you see it in the movie it's already been in effect in excess of 10 years know that yeah. 
Well, you know, it's interesting because many of these movies come out of Hollywood, and most people don't even understand what Hollywood stands for, why they got that big sign over there in the hills there overlooking L.A. and so on again like that one. Hollywood was the birch wood. It was the holy wood that wickers used, and they're still using wicker methodology to get convey energies to us because they serve the snake folks. And they must warn you before they do it, so they put their warning in the form of movies so you won't understand that you were warned. And again, I think one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life was 2012. I know, I know. Because Horrible. it paid so well, in living color, so believable, and every negative aspect of this so-called December 21st solstice move was in that movie was there. You hold that in your mind, and now you're using concentrated thought on evil and horror and everything else. Never seen anything like that before. But yeah, they got Prometheus. They got another one coming up. I'm aware of all of them. The thing is, what you told the public, which I agree with you on, people start understanding the subliminal things behind it. And let me say one thing. Every time you go to a multiplex theater and see these cinemascope things in plasma, you're getting radiated because that's where they also exercise mind control. If you remember what started back in 78 with the neurophone, Valentine has now graduated to where they can fill churches and everything else with people and hypnotize them while you're watching it. Be careful. Well, Dr. Blair, thank you so much, Sister Shiva. We appreciate you. And once again, for those of you who uh, have not heard, uh, Nishiba E. Spirit E is a host here on Blog Talk Radio. And Dr. Blair, I, I'll try to connect you two because uh, she, you guys are both there. And uh, I know both of you guys are doing everything that the two of you can do to see to it that this light <laughs> gets shined in the mind. So um, thank you so much, Nishiba. Dr. Blair, you know, you've been talking about uh, these people. They're, they're hell-bent, literally hell-bent on making this a hell on earth. You've shared information, and what I find interesting is that as we move through this so-called ascension, they're doing everything they can to get the most negative aspect of everything. So my question is to you, and you spoke on this, and I know you'll be building on it uh, more this weekend. I'll be there, by the way. I'll be actually be home, and I'll get a chance to, to hang with you uh, All right, as beautiful. well. Yeah, okay. yeah, it'd be, it'd be awesome to see you again. But what is ascension? I mean, there's so much double speak and, and gobbledygook, and you're someone who's been looking at this thing a long time. What is ascension in your observation, your research, and share with us what your thoughts are and what we're going actually going through at the other end of the pond? Well, our planet is going from kindergarten to grad school. I know many people who do listen to me, and probably on your network there's not as many as when I was on doing other networks, but hopefully they'll learn. I've said this well, for the longest. 80,000 right? I mean, 80,000. I hope that's enough for you. <laughs> How many? I have 80,000 plus downloads on my network here. Well, so I see. Well, I hope you don't hang enough. up when, you find, <laughs> when I'm your guest or when, <laughs> when we're doing it. I'd hang up. <laughs> I, know. I did a show in California the other morning. They cut me off three times. So, you know, that's really interesting. But when you're beginning to look at this ascension factor, it's an idea that our planet has been a zoo. I can think of no better descriptive adjective now, whatever you want to call it. It's an occupied zoo, and we have been the ones inside the cages. Our planet has had to dwell with us and then dwell with many other races of consciousness and evil people. In fact, many of us were created by these snake people, these draconic people, and they're served by a group of people called the Illuminati. And the Illuminati want to illuminate them to the point that they make gods of these gods because they, many of them don't look like anything you'd want to see. And they also have had rulership over us on our earth for over billions of years. Our earth is supposed to be 46 I'm sorry, 4.9 billion years old, and they've occupied us for 3.8 billion years. So they feel they own us, own the planet. They've made races here. They've synthetic, synthesized everything else. They've done everything. And now they're told that the graduating people, the incoming souls, and this gets into heavy incarnation. That's why I hope you come out to the lectures I'm going to be doing there in California. These incoming souls now have finished their incarnation. They are now ready to graduate and go into higher spheres in our planet is no longer have to hold babies and evils and sick people here. Our planet has been rewarded by going to the fifth dimension. That seems unheard of in cosmic time if you read metaphysics and if you understand what some of the people in the Galactic Confederation and others who say that they are higher vibing, whether you believe it or not, not important. But the whole point is we're gone, she's going to be free. 
So now she can go to her dream. One of her dreams was the fifth dimension. Planets, some planets can go up to the seventh dimension or seventh heaven if they call it. Well, she is now going to, in her mind, go to the fifth vibration. She's going to skip the fourth. So we don't go to mid school and, and junior college. We're going to graduate school and high, where thoughts are things, and that's why people must learn to control their thoughts, must learn to, to do everything they can because that's a theta world. That reward will get rid of our arch enemies, the Dracons, and this is what they can. They cannot go there. They're locked on the fourth dimension with their solar cells, and now they're about to be exposed to what they are. The battles that will be going here in the next six months are beyond belief because they're going to be fought on the fourth, fifth dimension. They're going to be fought on the third dimension, and everything they can do to get rid of us. And I want to say us, I don't mean black people. I don't mean white people. I don't mean yellow people. I don't mean brown people. Anybody with souls, they're going to try and make fail, and they're trying to hold back the progression of a planet when the Creator has said it's going to. You're going to see a battle like you have not seen. They're going to lose, but it's like a rat or a roach in the corner. Leap out, run out, but they'll come out fighting. And that's that's interesting because I I know that um, a lot of people are, are are you know people who are more into the traditional religion. Even they are starting to get something else. They're starting to or rather look for something else. And I know that. Uh, at one time, you were a, a mainstream uh, a master. I, I remember you on either an interview that uh, I heard you on. Um, is religion the way to, I mean, is, can religion and spirituality coexist in this time of ascension since we're both dealing with a common enemy, it seems? Coexist, but one's going to pull down the other. I was into okay. the ministry. A Baptist minister had a growing church. I mean, I was beginning to get good good offerings and offertories and everything else. I was never going to get an ATM into my church, so I, that was not my design. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and that's what these mega churches now have. You don't have the money, you can't get you can't get to Christ. So whatever again. No, I had to leave that for spirituality. To me, the twain or there is no such thing as a spiritual religious person. You cannot have both. You either have religion or spirituality. That is my definition. Since I'm not a hypocrite, and I consider myself a learned man to find out I didn't know too much because I've been miseducated, so that's another thing to pay for, to pay for ignorance hurt me. <laughs> then I found that the stuff that I paid to learn was wrong. So then I said, forget this. So I pray and I ask and I ask the Creator, lead me to something. What is it? I'm not a hypocrite. I try to be intelligent. And that's when I found metaphysics. And from that point on, I began to find books of truth, I began to find energies and, and, and answers to questions that the, that the different religions that I had studied, and I studied seven of them pretty ardently, and one I thought I'd mastered. I'll never say that again. I master nothing. I'm a student of these things. So that's all I can say. I don't think the two can coexist, but they are coexisting now because they're Christians, they're Jews, they're uh, Babylonians, they're Krishnas, they're Yahwehans. I mean, you know, there's a belief in Allah. All of these people fervently believe in their religion, but they still fight, they still kill, they still die of ignorance, they still take shots, they still are bombing the earth and, and creating things on the earth that should not be. So if this is what your religion teaches you, what kind of religion must we have? We can't get along with our religious consciousness, so therefore we better find something else. I call it spirituality. Okay. Okay. Has all of this happened before? I know you, I, I heard you on a radio show once. Uh, talk briefly about uh, Atlant. Well, over the years, I've heard you talk about Atlantis and the the old world, uh, the highly technical world. Has this happened before? This this cycle we're going through is this the first time it's happened, or is this something that you know has happened before? Uh, and if it has happened before, what did those people do that we could be learning from, or what did they do that we shouldn't be doing to repeat so we won't repeat what happened to them? It's happened before, but never where the whole planet went. Certain continents on the planet, certain philosophical beliefs on the planet, certain races on the planet either ceased to be or came into being. But never when a whole planet, the whole planet itself, graduates to higher consciousness. Uh -huh. This is what is now happening now. To stay on this planet, you must evolve. You must ascend. You must go into higher consciousness. You must vibrate faster. You must become more spiritual. Other than that, you cannot stay on this planet. And if that means if you stay on, and I don't want to get real technical with this, and because you can stay on this planet and fail and die and go to hell. Because hell is a state of consciousness. It's a covering over of higher consciousness. Heaven means to cover. But I'm saying there's now those that will ascend for the ascension part of this planet, 
those who would descend or stay the same for the descension part of this planet. And this is the whole thing. Never that I can understand for the domination of four billion years has a planet like this ever gone through this as a whole stage, individuals, but never a whole planet. That's why mm. it's a whole time. That's why if you now half the time you look in the sky, you don't see stars, you see spaceships. And people are seeing it and don't believe what they're seeing. You're seeing something that twinkles and has energy around it. They try to say it's the magnetic field around the sun or around stars and all stars are suns. That's not the case. You see these things move through the heavens. You see them move fast. You see them move slow. Everything is coming to watch this three-wing circus as the people in the zoo, the animals in the zoo, unchained as they are, are finally going to step out of their cages. So it's a wonderful time. No, I don't think it's been a time like this on this planet. No. Other planets, yes. Oh, okay. So it has happened before, but just not here. Okay. Not here. Well, um, also, if you want to, if you do have a question for Dr. Blair, a call-in question is 347-202-0471. Uh, chat room is open, so if you have a question for the chat room. Uh, Dr. Blair, I got a, a email I meant to ask you last week, um, so I'm going to, you know, I didn't get a chance to. And I know that me and you actually did a show uh, you talked a bit about uh, you. Actually, we did a show dedicated to your interaction with ETs that you were a contactee, not an abductee. And then you mentioned it off it, offline to me last week, and I just forgot to ask you the question. I had someone ask to, to uh, ask Dr. Blair, what does he think about if I'm being visited by what I believe to be extraterrestrials? That was the question. Well, again, I don't want to go into a big, deep thing about my part of it. I've done it before. It's on tape. It's called uh, An Enlightening Encounter. If anybody wants it, just go purchase it off the Internet, please. But to answer in a more figurative way about the question the person asked, um, I think that our planet has had many visitors dominated by the Dracon race and those who serve the Dracon race. So consequently, the Illuminati are those that serve. Religion is usually what the Illuminati has put forth to confuse man. And, of course, we must now understand the difference between human, man, and mankind. Man, womb man, mankind, and human. All three different subjugations. Again. So um, having been a contactee and not an abductee, and it's a big difference, my contact to me, was one of the most miraculous, wonderful things. I was rewarded for having questioned, for having searched, for asking out to the Creator for give me some truth. Let me get out of this miasma. Where am I? And I was granted that. I was so happy to be a contactee. An abductee is a person who has gone through, and most abductees have crypt chips in them. They've already been mind-controlled. If not mind-controlled, they're monitored. It's like you tag an animal that you re-release again. I was not tagged. I did not go through that. And I did had the privilege of seeing spaceships close up. I had them to perform for me. I had my mind read. I had the future told by 18 minutes. All things that I couldn't go to any school and learn to do. Still haven't. But yet, here was some people that looked like me. And I think this is another reason why I haven't been on coast to coast like this. My contacts were with Negroid-looking powerful yes. people, powerful men. I think it's the one reason because when I... The same guy that I honor, and I, and I met him by through a Polish man, George Adamski, which is <laughs> really yes, ironic. Yes, and yes. George Adamski pretty much stopped me from going to jail because I crashed into a press conference. He didn't know me from all and claimed that he knew this was old black guy coming to meet him. So as I say, my life has been led. And I'm grateful to the Creator for giving me that because it turned me around. And, you know, once you say you turn you around, you don't turn back around again. I'm right. not a gyroscope. I've been turned in the right direction. I've achieved answers I couldn't get before. And I still think, right. again, because of that, that uh, that contact was for a reason. I'm, I'm glad of it. It's changed my life for the better. And hopefully when you meet and talk with me, it may help change yours. Or at least you'll hear another side that can be backed up with facts, not just exp expositions, you know. Yes. Or well, we did a show uh, it was a couple of years ago, actually, Dr. Blair, and I'm going to put it in a feature. So for those of you who are listening to my network for the first time, um, you can go into the archives. There was an interview we did with Dr. Blair on his uh, experience, and he went into detail. And, and I, as I recall, Dr. Blair, you told me offline prior to that, he said, you know, rarely does anybody ever even ask you. They always want you to either talk about help, well or talk about uh, uh, 
global nationalist context of things. So it was a great discussion that we had, uh, very interesting, and we'll have to do a follow-up to that at some point up the road. Um, I've got another caller for you. Uh, caller calling out of area code 706, uh, last four digits, 9058. What's your first name? Welcome to the show, and what's your question for Dr. Blair? Good afternoon, gentlemen. This is Kenneth, and I wanted to know about the 13th uh, constellation. They say we got a new constellation that, that's coming up. Instead of 12, we got 13, the off. starts with an O, and uh, does that change everybody's uh, astrological uh, sign? Okay, a 13th constellation, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, I'm not familiar with the 13th constellation. I know there's supposed to be 12 and using the zodiacal signs, and they base our, all of our astrology on those signs of, of that, that main uh, constellation. Uh, there was said to have been a 13th planet, and, of course, that 13th planet is now the asteroid belt. It was uh, also it was a collision between something called Maldek and Malona. It was a 13th planet and her moon. And that was destroyed. That's what formed the asteroid belt. And that's what gave most of us our problems now in the solar system. Because when that was destroyed, it affected the larger planets and the smaller planets and led inroads into these daggone reptilians in the first place once the Maldekians and Melonians had, had lowered the vibration rate of this whole system. So I'm not really familiar with the 13th. By the way, too, I'm not too much into astrology because I've studied it. I've had numerologists and psychologists, I'm psychologists, <laughs> numerologists and psy, uh, these one Christologists and numer uh, and astrologers and so on and so forth, having studied and understand in a year of confusion and understanding Gregorian calendar, the Julian calendar, understanding we have 72 other constellations, some of which the sun is 500,000 times, hear that. 500,000 times, like the one in Arcturus bigger than this one, I cannot agree with astrologers now with the kind of mundane thing they're using. Plus, that's all going to change this year anyway. So my whole outlook is much different. Uh, unfortunately, I stick by it, and of course, yeah, I do take on all comers who want to argue with me or debate with me or who want to coincide with me. All right. Thank you. Hey, thank you, caller, uh, for being part of the program. Um, Dr. Blair, you, you, you've made mention of next year, 2013. You've done this just, not just today, but, I mean, I've heard either on discussions we had, we used to co-host a show last year on another network, and I've heard you on other discussions. Everybody has always said 2012, 2012, 2012 but you have always talked about 2013, the year after 2012. Could you build a little more on that, and what is it, why is it that you don't, know, you talk about 2012 as, as the cycle but as far as specific things we should be on the lookout for, you always get into 2015. Oh, yeah. 2012 is nothing. 2012, we're in hell. Hello? 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 Hello, Dr. Blair. Okay. We've lost Dr. Blair. Okay, let's try to... While we're getting him back on the line, what uh, what I will tell you, um, uh, he'll be. He's, he, we're going to try to get him back on the line. I will tell you this. I think I've got him back on the line. Let's see here. Uh, no, that's not Dr. Blair. Okay, let's see what we can do to get him back on the line here. Uh, what I'm going to do, we're going to go on ahead and. Uh, we're going to put give you a little musical break here, and uh, while we're waiting on that, hello, Doc, Doctor Blair. Hey, they cut me off again, huh? I don't know what happened. We you, you were talking in mid sentence, and then you just dropped off the line. There you go. <laughs> there there you go. Time. They're always what listening, and they definitely what? don't like when I break it down. <laughs> and I thought I broke it down very well. I guess I broke it down too well. So it all went into space. Yeah, yeah. I don't even well, know what it was heard and wasn't heard. Now I'm thinking I'm being heard were, and nothing's happening. You were on the line. You were on the line, and then you were gone. And you were talking about 2013. Oh, I got into it deeply into 2013. None of that came across, huh? Uh, you were you you were just as you were explaining why you look at 2013. That's when you went off the line. <laughs> They're good, and they do listen to me. That's for sure. I must be some kind of thorn in their side. Any rate, um, I don't know how much time to go. I don't know what was even covered. Now, 
what I'm saying, well, 2013 is just 10 days after the solstice. And, of course, the solstice is when everything's supposed to happen. Uh, that's when many of the prophets say that we'll have three days of darkness and so on like that. It will not be the end of this earth. It will be the beginning of a new consciousness for this earth. And everything about that is only is Hellenized. Helen means to cover. And we're going through hell right now in the depths of consciousness, not understanding what really we're leading up to again. So this is, I guess, what I was saying. And, man, I got into so much depth. I, I, yeah, I, I, you I, said we're... We're in hell, and then, boop, there you went. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, as I, as I was saying before, I'm not too much into astrology simply because the way it's been taught in the Western world is all false and wrong. We don't even know how many planets we have. But 2013 is simply the beginning now of higher consciousness. People will be seeing spaceships. They'll be seeing a new sun coming up again behind our sun. They're going to experience telepathy. They're going to have seeing uh, so, uh, shadow people. You know, many people now, you have to be careful when you're driving, too, because as we begin to get in higher dimension, people are going to begin to see things out of the corner of their eye, dark shadows and other things. People will be stopping on green lights and going on red lights because they won't be able to, to get balanced in what's happening to them. This is a time of confusion and utter amusing. It's amusing to those who understand what's happening. It's confusing and very deadly to those who won't understand what's happening and will not accept the fact that our planet is, our planet is changing vibrational rates. I went into it deeper, but, man, I don't remember everything I said because I thought okay. I was saying it. When I came to a break, I realized I was talking to a dead air mic. <laughs> so <laughs> they well, don't like me, you, tell and they tell, tell me that every, and they always tell me one thing. We're listening to you. <laughs> well, give us the announcement again for uh, the weekend, uh, this weekend coming up, and uh, tell us about that. With pleasure. On Friday, I'll, I'm going into L.A. At Friday, I'll be at the Afiba Center at 7 o'clock. We'll be talking about Ascension, same thing we're talking about now, but in more detail. The Truth About Our Sun, same thing we're talking about now, but in more detail. And it's always open for Q&A. It's a very uh, beautiful little center there at Crenshaw. It's, one, it's in the heart of the ghetto, which now is no longer a ghetto because of centers like this. The people there can come and see me. It's a donation factor, and that's about it. The next day is a biggie, 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 biggie. That's when I'm going to bring forth the challenge on how to save California and how to save your own life. And I'll make sense out of it because I'm going to give you a history that some people may have heard because there's nothing new under the sun, but most people have not. Uh, the admission on that one is 20 bucks. And after that, and it's open to q and A. I got a movie I want to show too. It's quite a beautiful, and it's a beautiful place. That evening, we're going to go into the meditation. And that's where we begin to see if the things I'm talking about can be done and shown what concentrated thought can do, shown what the power of a sun harnessed including the sun in your own body, your own soul, can do. Explaining the truth about those suns from a different point of view and also getting to a meditating circle to begin to try to heal people, to awaken consciousness, and distance will mean nothing. That phone number there for more information is 323-300-4013. 323-300-4013. You asked for Michelle there. Also, Sister Franklin is part of that, too. And then the last one, of course, you can come out if you want. I won't be speaking there unless they make me. And that's the gathering of souls. It's to honor me for my scholarship for teaching. And I'm grateful for those who thought I was finally worth that because sometimes it never happens in a man's lifetime. It happens after they die. So, again, if you want to come out for that one again, uh, they're going to present me with a, uh, I think it's a statue or a plaque or something in honor of my scholarship. And I thank them very much for that one again. But the biggest one there is probably on the 7th which, of course, is at the Papalian Institute of Art. And I gave, it's at Washington and Maine, 323-300-4013. And the one before that, uh, which is to say, is at the Afiba Center, uh, again, at, uh, at, at Crenshaw, uh, at, what is it, 57... Crenshaw and Slauson. It's, uh, yeah, there you it's, go. Uh, yeah, what is Crenshaw it and Slauson. Crenshaw and Slauson. It's actually it was an old fire station, and uh, Brother Jabari actually is a fireman. He bought it and made it available for the community for these type of events. And it's a oh, really yeah. nice, a lot of love and a lot of spirit in the room. So uh, I grew up in that neighborhood, actually not very far from there. And you're right, the, the demographics have changed so much. I moved away from California and moved back. But you'll be yeah. there Friday, and it'll be an awesome, awesome time for all of us that get a chance to, to be part of that. And I'll be there and, with you. So. And thank you very much. And our landline here, 708 
And for those of you who didn't get the complete answer, I didn't know I was on dead air, so that's why I couldn't backtrack after that. But I do want to thank you again, Brother Quaid, all the listeners who are still with us and were with us, and may the Creator continue to bless us. We better have a Creator, and he or she better bless us, because we're in hell now. (laughs) Yes, Dr. Blair. Thanks again, as always, for being a part of this experience and sharing this light. I will see you uh, out there this weekend. And uh, the Meta Center website, one more time. www.themetacenter2.com. www.themetacenter, push number two, dot com. Everything we talked about here as far as tapes and stuff and, and occurrences and, and destinations is right on the website. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, if you happen to be in the Los Angeles area, please, you owe it to yourself to be a part of the experience this Friday night will be something and experience indeed. And I have had the opportunity to uh, be present when Dr. Blair is giving a presentation. The uh, man has a lot of energy, uh, much more energy than his years, you would think. And uh, it'll be a, a very powerful discussion. And we want to make sure that as many of you are that, uh, that can be there or be there to show him the support and the love that uh, you have for him and the work that he's done. Uh, this is Tony Quaid. Uh, once again, I want to thank all of you, uh, Sister Nishiba. If you know what I call you, we got some things to talk about. Uh, all of those of you who continue to listen to us, um, uh, we we have a small audience of downloads here on Blog Talk Radio, a small audience of 82,000 plus downloads over the last few years, but nevertheless, that audience we appreciate. And for those of you in ears distance, remember that we are all we have. Be sure and circulate the blessing. Be a blessing to those that you come in contact with. Share love. Give love. Be love because love is all it really is. Uh, I will be here next week along with Dr. Blair at our regular time, our regular time, Thursdays at 430 uh, Pacific Coast, uh, 7.30 East Coast, 6.30 Central. We did a special event because of logistics uh, this week, but Thursday is our permanent time. And on that note, I'm going to go out, and we will uh, do it again next week. Peace. <laughs>